In human terms, the Mount St. Helens eruptions have been ruinous. But even on this scale, nature has a way of turning destruction into new creation. Bill Van Amberg and Carl Wickman show us a striking example of how nature's creative cycles have worked before and will work again. This is Mount St. Helens as it looked two weeks before its devastating eruption. And this is Mount Lassen today, seen over Manzanita Lake. Different forces created and shaped each peak, yet even to the naked eye, the similarities between the two are striking. But while Northwest students are missing school because of St. Helens' dangers, California school children are clamoring on Lassen's calmer mysteries, a seemingly harmless sulfurous sandbox for kids to toy with, a geothermal playground of innocently vented volcanic power. But it wasn't always like that. Starting Memorial Day of 1914 and lasting for seven years, Mount Lassen was a black ash belching behemoth, shooting dust as far as Reno, Nevada. These exclusive views are the only known motion pictures made of the volcano in action. It looks hauntingly like St. Helens early eruptions. The mountain blew like this 150 times that first year. Then in May of 1915, the mountain spewed mud flows and a hot blast that created this. It's called the devastated area, just like up on Mount St. Helens. And almost 65 years ago to the day, a huge hot blast came tearing down the slopes of this mountain, leveling everything in its path. The trees have just barely moved into the area again, but even here, three and a half miles from the top of the peak, you can see huge trees that were leveled, their roots torn out, the tops of them torn down in the direction of the blast, just like on St. Helens. War was starting when these trees were knocked down, their remains are still here. A grim reminder of the horrible force that came down Mount Lassen. Nothing remained in an area three and a half miles from the mountain. Mud flows scoured out creek beds. An entire forest was flattened. And this from a blast similar but much smaller in scope than St. Helens. At Lassen, five and a half million board feet of timber was destroyed. One billion was destroyed at St. Helens. Lassen sent a cloud seven miles into the air. St. Helens sent one ten miles. Mud flows traveled 17 miles from Lassen. They moved 40 from St. Helens. And St. Helens devastated an area as large as the entire Lassen National Park. That's why it's staggering to realize how long it has taken Lassen to live again. It takes, uh, oh, 35, 40 years before you, uh, seedling can get a good foothold. Uh, realizing that all of this is, is new material brought down from the mountain. So there's really no soil built up here. So it takes the grasses and, and other uh, bits of organic material to build a, a soil layer before the trees can get established. So what you see here has happened since the mid-40s. From destruction to creation, from death to life, Lassen is a good example of what we can expect around St. Helens. It takes time, but the growing season is faster at St. Helens, and we'll be watching a brand new environment There's move more, in where nothing can yeah, now grow. The, the, the volcanic activity to cease now, about the first things that could come in would be things like lichens and mosses and things growing on the rocks. And that'll take you know, a number of years even to get anything like that started. Uh, the wind and, and birds could possibly bring in seeds from, from the tree species and you could get a few seedlings growing up there, say in a matter of 10 or 15 years or so, depending on how deep the ash is. Just like the Toodle River, Hat and Lost Creeks were destroyed, filled with 18 feet of hot mud, their courses altered, the fish in them boiled and washed away. Slowly, those creeks carved back down through the engulfing land, slowly cleaned themselves out. The rivers will come back, but even at last, and it was years before people could trust them again. Well, Hat, yeah, Hat Creek was in, uh, was around that, it was a gritty, sandy stuff, around it for a year or two after that mudslide, you know, killed all the fish in it and everything, and, but it's cleared up, I mean, they put the fish back in it, but it's all right now, but I don't know, but I wouldn't surprise me if she don't blow again. While the mountain has been silent since 1921, it is still one of the most closely watched and monitored in the world. Seismographs, tilt meters, and other instruments cluttering its flanks. And there is still a hazardous area in the park, closed to people, the buildings boarded up. The fear is not lava, though. It's a rock slide worry from volcano-weakened slopes. Lassen remains an active geothermal site, and the fumaroles and mud pots bear a strong resemblance to today's Spirit Lake. Is this possibly the future of the lake we're seeing? Whatever does take place, it will be years before St. Helens stabilizes. But like Lassen, this is just one stop in nature's cycle. A longer scale, perhaps, but just like the seasons changing or a flower growing in a meadow. 
It is long in human terms, but we're seeing an amazing act of creation in a human lifetime. What Lassen looks like today is not necessarily what Mount St. Helens will look like in the near future. They're two very different areas. But it might give us some very important clues as to where we might be heading in the years ahead. Indian tribal memory talks about this whole Cascade region being very active, spanning thousands of years. And that's one maybe very important lesson for all of us to learn. Because to learn how to live with the volcano in the next few years, we're going to have to learn to live with nature. And no matter whether we want to or not, there are some forces that just can't be controlled. From Mount Lassen, I'm Bill Van Amberg reporting for Channel 2 News.